Good morning, still. It's uh, April the 26th. No, it's not. It's July the 26th. I don't know where April came from. <clears throat> Lovely summer day. It's uh, about 26 degrees, going to 28. A bit breezy. The heat has broken by a few degrees. It was very hot the last couple of days. One reason I didn't walk yesterday. Also, I had just kind of awkwardly spaced other things I had to do that didn't really give me a good walking time. Um, so we're heading downtown. I'm going to go do some riding. I'm getting a haircut then at uh, 1.30 at the Hotel Saskatchewan, both of those. So. If I don't get run over by joggers on the way. She barely moved over. Been doing well. I've been doing royalties today, tallying up book sales for Shadow Pop Press authors and sending out royalty statements. Still have a couple to go. They need to be done by the end of the month. Also, did another interview today. I did one yesterday. I interviewed Hayden Trinholm, somebody I've known a long time. That will be coming up on August sixth. And then today, I interviewed an author named M. J. Koo, who was quite delightful to talk to. Looking forward to reading her books, actually, when I get a chance. She did send them to me. <laughs> Among Thieves and Thick as Thieves are the two books in her duology, fantasy duology. So that's coming up then on August 20th. That one should go live. So I did all that. I put out another podcast earlier in the week on Monday. I put out, no, Tuesday, I guess. Also yesterday. Is that also yesterday? I guess it was. I put out uh, a new episode <laughs> featuring Canadian horror writer Ado Van Belkum, uh, who's currently kind of got a new thing happening. Oh, looks like they're working on this again now that it's been sold. Um, his... Uh, YA series Wolfpack has become a TV series on Paramount Plus streaming service. And uh, one of the stars of it, although she plays a character that doesn't exist in the books, is Sarah Michelle Keller, of course, of Buffy fame. Sort of her return to teen horror, I guess. She's not playing a teenager anymore, though. I haven't watched any of the uh, series, but it is uh, something new for Edo. So that's an older, an older story that uh, really took off with the new format. I'd be happy for that to happen to me. If anybody wants to look at the Shards of Excalibur series, it makes a great, would make a great YA fantasy series. I'll take my word for it. Go read the books. Also published by my Shadow Pop Press, though they were originally published by Kato Books. Well, keep moving. <laughs> Get out of my way. Should really have waited for me to cross. Actually, actually, I had the right of way. <clears throat> Cloud in the sky that I can see. There might be some lurking somewhere, but not in the part of the sky that's visible here. Shadowpaw Press is, of course, named after my cat, Shadowpaw. Our cat. It's not just my cat. There's the Scotch Museum over there. I think I will wait for the light to change here. Instead of walking up the street, so I'm heading straight up to Scar Street, so I might take a slightly different route than usual. Yeah, Royal Saskatchewan Museum, this is Albert Street. We'll change here in a minute.
We'll go along College Avenue here, I think, at least for a block. And then maybe start zigzagging our way up. Maybe I'll uh, do my normal walk around the lake this week when we get to Friday. It's my usual day for it. I could have just walked down in time for the haircut at 1.30, but I don't want to be sweaty when I get there. I'm getting my hair cut, so this way I'll go have lunch and relax and do some work and get my hair cut and then probably go home after that. <clears throat> it's a house I know well. It used to belong to the Shumiatchers, noted citizens of Regina, Morris and Jackie Shumiatcher. Our wedding uh, shower was in there. And we have a number of things that used to belong to Jackie that we bought at their uh, estate sale. Kind of a memory of someone we really loved. <clears throat> I'm going to zigzag my way up, I think, today. The other entrance, one of the interesting things about the house is that sort of Japanese-style roof. It's really two houses put together, but it has that kind of Japanese style. And, on it. I like this place, although it's not a house anymore. It's a office. As you can see it has an addition back here, in fact. Or is that the one over? Maybe it's the next one over has the addition. Anyway, it's an office. A few other older houses in this area, mingled in with newer things. And oh yes, of course, the Frontier Center for Public Policy is actually one of my publishers. I wrote a most of, not all of, large portion of a book about the Grand Divine years. He was a premier of Saskatchewan in the 80s, back when I was a newspaper reporter. <clears throat> I interviewed him. I interviewed a lot of politicians back then. Do I miss being a journalist? I don't think I fit in the current mode. I think journalism is pretty sad these days. It seems to be far more about pushing a specific point of view than presenting things impartially. And since it generally isn't my point of view, I particularly find that annoying. That egg. Oh, it is a live cat. I wasn't sure. I thought it was an ornament of some sort, but it's a cat. <laughs> it's in a cage, so it can be outside on the balcony and they don't have to worry about it running off. <clears throat> cat probably likes that too. They like feeling secure. Shadowpaw's not allowed to go outside, but once or twice when he's gone through the door, he's immediately so cautious it's no problem to grab him and keep him from going any further. You see, like you get old houses and then apartment buildings in this transitional neighborhood, as it's sometimes called. Although well, it's been transitioning for a long time. I don't think this thing is still as smooth as I would like it to be, this gimbal, but I do like the fact that uh, once I set the horizon, it kind of sticks to it, whether I, no matter how I twist my hand. So that makes for a more level. I just have to remember if I want to look up, I have to or point the camera up. I have to use a little joystick to make it happen. There's a fireside bistro over there. I, I quite like eating there. Once in a while, usually when my wife's away, I'll walk over here for supper, since it's so handy to our house. Oof. This building has offices in it, I think. It also has what I always think of as a pig snout. <laughs> that awning, that style of awning always makes me think of a pig snout. We'll keep zigzagging our way. That's the uh, Santa Boya Gallery over there, which uh, is one of our favorite commercial galleries. We've got a lot of uh, artwork there and had things framed and so far. And that was uh, one of the owners there who was waving at me because he knows me. An older apartment building, Tuma Lodge. I don't know what Tuma stands for or means.
You know, the trees have been here a long time and they built the sidewalk around them. You also get older buildings with extension on them, like that upper floor up there. I remember when it was built on that older apartment. Or an older apartment, but obviously a new entranceway there. I might walk down there if I wanted to. Yes, I could. I don't know if I want to, but I could. for sale. I don't think it's a house. It's probably an office space. I suppose you could turn it back into a house. It'd be a good sized one. Really old one here. You can tell by the brickwork and the general design. Another cross. We'll go by the Plunger Fine Art Gallery here. They used to have a deck. Here's the side of that old apartment building, and then there's another old one next to it. They have a cafe, and there used to be, this was always set up as a deck, but I haven't seen it for a while. I wonder if they even offer food anymore after COVID. Maybe that even did that part of their operation in. I don't know. Currently, they're closed for the summer break, so hard to read too much into that. And we come up to Lauren Street here, where you get Lauren Drugs on that corner, little drugstore that's been there a long time. I think there's a post office in there, although it's not one I use. I've occasionally bought stuff in there. I don't know why that truck has stopped when, in fact, it has the right of way. Another old apartment building. This is Tangerine, which is a nice little restaurant, coffee shop. Also offers uh, cooking classes. I guess that's their office down here, Schoolhouse Culinary. Oh, let's go down the alley just to be different. I usually walk down this alley. This is the back of the first condo of this style that was built in the neighborhood. And when we were looking to buy our condo, looking to buy a condo somewhere, we uh, visited someone in here and liked it. And that's one reason we ended up buying the one on Scar Street that I sometimes point out. It's the SGI building down at the end there, the tower. You can just see the top of the Hotel Saskatchewan peeking up. That's where we're headed. If I see a way through here somewhere, I will go over one more street, but I'm not sure any of these buildings offer a way through that they expect you to take anyway. There's a bit of a sidewalk there. Not ooh. Yeah, it carries on. Okay, I'll go this way. Don't think I've ever walked through this little piece of path until today. Entrance to the uh, apartment building there. Big apartment building on the other side. I think that one may be a senior's assisted living sort of place. Maybe not, might just be an apartment building. There's the hotel, so almost there. This is usually about an 18 minute walk, 18 to 20 minutes. Apartments for rent there, if you're looking. Bachelor and one bedroom. On-site manager means there's actually somebody there you can complain to if things aren't working. Another old apartment building. I kind of like the looks of that one. Again, I do have a book called uh, Historic Walks of Regina and Moostra, but I would have to either carry it around with me and try to read from it, 
or go back and try to memorize it, which isn't going to happen. I don't know why this building is called Municipal Hail. It is. I think that must be an insurance office, but it's hard to be sure. Now I'll use the crosswalk here to cross, even though there's nobody coming. So there's the town. This is Go this way again just to keep up my zigzagging. Another older building there. Downtown looks a little different from this angle, anyway. Hard to see the screen, so I'm not sure how good I'm aiming it. That looks pretty good. Then South Power, and then we're going to be walking up behind the Hotel Saskatchewan, up the alley here. I don't know if I'll go all the way up the alley. So up there at the top is the Royal Suite. I've been in there. It's where the King, or well, it used to be the Queen, I guess the King, if he ever comes visit us, will stay up there, most likely. Anybody can rent it, but it is the Royal Suite in Saskatoon at the Vesbro, their big castle-like hotel. Again, an old railway hotel like this one is. They have a Vice Regal Suite, not the Royal Suite. I don't know why they don't also have a royal suite. The Queen and King may very well visit Saskatoon as well, but we are the capital, so we've probably gotten royalty a little more often than they have. Even though they're bigger. So another look up at the Sask Power. And we're looking straight up Scarth Street to downtown. And I will stop once I get up here closer to the uh, hotel. And that will be today's walk. I don't think I will stream my walk home. I'm probably going to have to stop somewhere along the way, so it's not really worth the effort. And we'll see about tomorrow. I'm not sure yet what I'll be doing tomorrow. I have a very important phone call in the morning. And uh, that's an old... Uh, that's not, well, it is old, but that's the uh, federal government building. So a little look at downtown there, Avery Tower over to the left. We'll stop here, and thanks for walking with me.